Holmes was born. Then he got fat, bald, and tired, tired, tired. Sup, Holmes? It. So honestly, sure. I think we're just being the video game industry. I don't know why. People are just extremely harsh. The whole everything yeah. is because we, we're like the most, um, how can I say, we're like the most creative industry out of all of them. Mm-hmm. We are. We, we completely are. I mean, like, i just give you one, one example. Okay, Mass Effect again, right? Okay, the fact that mm-hmm. you could be gay in Mass Effect, have full of male-on-male sex, right? We, you would never mm-hmm. ever see that. And say, I don't know, uh, you know, John Carter from Marcius came out, you know, like big sci-fi. Sure. You'd never see John Carter take it up the arse, would you? <laughs> That's true. You wouldn't do. I not that I've would ever seen in a but blockbuster. Master Effect is, is mm-hmm. like the blockbuster effect of that, and allows people to do that. So that's how come I think people instead of hating Bioware, should more like applaud them for doing stuff like that, like Bioware and EA even allowing that. So we are just more creative as an industry. And any other yeah. any other creative industry right now, music, all they sing about is getting dicks in mouths and you know sex and all that. And people go crazy as soon as there's like you know like two males have been sex in Mass Effect. I mean, you know because you can't really see them doing anything, just like two bodies just right. like that. You know. So sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a strange thing the way video games are. I think in terms of respect from the mainstream world, you know, the the world yeah. at large, it's right next to pornography. Like when I tell people I write about video games, I get a lot of sidewards glances, especially from anyone over, I'd say, 40. Close to the same as if I, like, reviewed gay porn. They, they, they're they not sure what to think of me. Whereas if I said I wrote about movies or music, oh, that's cool, you're in entertainment, but you're into video games, it's like... Are you creepy? Do you like collect toys, which I actually do? That's one thing that uh, when you were talking earlier about uh, the standards people have for their games and how you know they expect a lot out of Mass Effect and uh, how your programmer expects a lot out of Skyrim if it's going to get those scores, it made me think of the fact that people don't seem to understand that there's definite tiers of uh, video game uh, budget. And, and as such, there's going to be tiers you can of uh, what you can expect out of the game. And Tim Schafer, to me, fits really well in that kind of uh, mid-range budget tier. When he goes high budget, he can't make a game that's going to appeal to that many people. He's got too much personality, to be honest. Yeah. If you aren't going to appeal to everybody, you can't have much personality or else you're going to end up turning people off in the process. You have to be Call of Duty or Halo or something that's just really simple and appeals to people on a really base level whereas um, Tim Schafer is uh, too too smart for that in a way not to sound snobby oh I just sounded super snobby didn't I oh. no I, I, I just think Tim Schafer is just he just has his own crowd you know he has his own crowd so it's just I think uh, like like Brutal Legend I wasn't really that fond of that game gameplay wise because it's just uh, I was expecting something else so I think it's just you're expecting something else gameplay wise, I expect like something a bit like Psychonauts and it was something different. So I think and Psychonauts didn't do that well either. None of his none of his games do. Which tier would you want to be in? Let's talk more about Luke Bernard, because he's the interesting one, if you ask me. If you were to pick which and I tier I'm going to get an interview from Tim Schaefer, you know, you just said that. He's gonna see his video. <laughs> he actually hates the structure anyway, so <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't matter. He uh he like gave us the finger the other day or something. He hates our website. I don't know why. Um, but if you were to pick which tier you were going to spend the rest of your career in, small, you know, small budget, but small uh, return, uh, small I, need. Are you for... asking me if I pick between being rich or broke? <laughs> I'm asking if you were to pick like doing um, the equivalent of like local TV pays the bills, but you're not spending a lot of money on your show, and therefore you don't need to get a lot of money back for your show, or mainstream TV, or blockbuster movies. If you were to pick the game equivalents of those, which one do you think you'd pick for the rest of your career? It's hard, right? I have to, I have to stick with it. That, that's, um, that's uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I just like to do things and hope it's successful. I do. I think of that's I would say I don't need to make millions, if that makes any sense. Well, picture having a million-dollar budget for your game, like Tim Schafer did. Picture if your next game is going to have Jack Black in it. 
and the amount of pressure you there you then have to make it a huge success. Well, what but the I potential would do instead, if I had a million dollar budget, like somebody gave me a million dollars, instead of just doing one game, I'd do several games because then at least right, right, right. One, of, one of them will probably you know make make money. The others might fail, but we have more chance if you do more games. I kind of I kind of like to keep it on the smaller level, like um, mm -hmm. like. Downloadable titles. I wouldn't. I'm not really that interested in doing a box game. If that makes any sense, it's just too much. But I don't want to spend five years doing a game. That yeah, that sense. too. That too. When they when they cost all that money, you have to dedicate. Geez, five years. What is that? One.